describe revelations we've received, personally have received. Um, and what was that last part? And the relationship that I have with Christ. Um, when I, I, for starters, I, I don't think that we necessarily need to expect that everyone should always receive uh, a revelation from Christ. Um, I mean, we have, we, we have revelation, and I, I know I've talked to people who are like, I just want a revelation from Jesus. Like, have you even bothered opening this thing? You know, and they're like, no, I want a revelation from Jesus, right? And it's like, he's giving you some. Um, now, that being said, I think there are times where we have to be careful with the word revelation, um, because typically when we say revelation, it does tend to carry the connotation of, you know, like an inspired word, you know, kind of thing. Might receive some communication, might receive a, um, um, i trying to think of, you know, different ways that it might be. But I also don't think that we necessarily need to walk through life expecting, and if I'm not receiving and there's something wrong. Um, my relationship with Christ is one of obedience. He's my model. He has taught me how to live. And I follow his example and I obey his commands. And if the only place I ever read those are here, that's enough. Now, it also is the case we have the Holy Spirit. It, perhaps we might receive something else from God. I, I, there have been times that I have clear as day um, heard an audible voice. I can't tell you for sure that it was audible. No one else was around to say, hey, I heard that too. But I became aware of words from a voice that was not my own. I've had those instances. Um, some of them are deeply personal, so I won't necessarily share them. Um, but, I mean, and, and I've had the, the, the moments where, like, there was one instance where I was angry at God, and I, I had the keys to a church, so I'm in the church, and I'm, you know, they got the stained glass of Jesus, you know, and I'm down in the sanctuary, and I'm shaking my fist on the stained glass, you know, why would you let that happen? Oh, and I'm so mad. Um, and, I mean, I, I felt, I mean, I just a flood just overwhelming, like a tidal wave coming over me, flood of guilt. And I fell to my knees. Well, that wasn't a revelation. That wasn't like, you know, thus saith the Lord. That was, but that was God unmistakably communicating to me. Shortly thereafter, followed by a wave of peace and comfort. And so um, that would be one example. Because I, I don't know that we necessarily need to always expect uh, a voice, an answer. Um, sometimes God, God, God speaks through his word. He speaks through the wise counsel around us. Um, it's not always necessarily in that kind of supernatural way. Yeah. Um, and, and kind of on, on my end of things, um, kind of responding to the, to, the, to the first half and the second half, right? I think it's really important to recognize that nothing we know about God is from our own efforts. The Holy Spirit is active in our knowing or understanding anything about the Bible, anything about God. When we have faith, any of our knowledge that is true knowledge of what God has said we know it because as we have read the Word of God, the Holy Spirit has worked in our hearts and minds to help us to understand. And so in that regard, I think that that is maybe a more common type of revelation for, for the usage of that word to kind of expect, is that when we have faith, all of our understanding of the true knowledge of God is given to us and aided, and aided, you know, by the Holy Spirit in our study of His Word and in, in in our prayer life and in and through fellowship like wise counsel like Mark brought up, um, and, and then as it you know as for my personal relationship with Christ, I mean much like Mark said, it's it's one of obedience. I fall, I stumble, I to to quote my boss uh, Stan Bauer, 
great man. Um, we're all jacked up. Every one of us. I'm jacked up. He's jacked up. Everybody's jacked up. We've all got things that we struggle with. We've all got things that, you know, we stub our toes and they make us fall. We, we struggle. But at the end of the day, the Holy Spirit's there. God is there who loves us, guides us, protects us. He's there and, and he helps us obey. He helps us have hearts who want to love him, who desire to love and serve him well. And I think at the end of the day, the, the most simple way that I could put my relationship with God is simply, that, it is simply the way that John did. I am one who Christ has loved. And in that love, I am being led in a path of obedience. And yes, my flesh is going to fight every step of the way, and I'm going to sin, and I'm going to make mistakes. But at the end of the day, Christ has loved, is loving, and will love me for all of my days. And I can be confident in that because of the Bible and because of what God has said. Hear my cry, my cry for truth, my cry for truth, my cry for you.